Celebrating 30 years of phenomenal trend forecasting, five times a week, Monday through Friday. Here's Gerald Salenti with today's trends in the news. Hi, this is Gerald Salenti. It's Thursday, January 25th, 2018. And here are some of today's trends in the news. On the market front, boom, Asia, Europe, bop, U.S., beep. Only thing up today is Mr. Dow. NASDAQ's down a bit. Oil, beep, down a little bit. Gold, boop. Bitcoin. So, what's going on? How come that Dow hit a new high? Because Donald Trump told CNBC the dollar will get stronger. And that's what brought gold down. Remember what I keep saying. The stronger the dollar, weaker the gold. All right? Because the stronger the dollar, the higher the interest rates. The more it costs for carrying costs for gold. And you go into other investments. So, it all depends on the dollar as to where gold is going. But gold's looking pretty good right now. And of course, the numbers that the company is releasing, that's what's really driving up the market. Caterpillar had a good one. 3M had a good one. And a lot of them are having good ones. Fourth quarter earnings and sales have mostly beat analysts' expectations thus far. Are the companies that have reported quarterly results as of today 78% have beaten earnings and 82% have surpassed revenue estimates. So, it's earnings driving the market and that cheap dough that they're going to be bringing back with all that repatriation of the money that's going to go back into stock buybacks and merger and acquisition activity. And of course, the tax breaks are also helping the very big corporations going down from 35% to 21%, boosting their earnings. And oil really didn't do anything today, not much to say about it, other than the same old story. You look at the global economy, it has strength. Demand is going up a little bit, and then you have supply problems, particularly in Venezuela. You never know what's going to happen in Libya, and as always, Nigeria. So, oil's where it's at, and we believe it's going to stay in this range. Again, the 20, excuse me, the 50 to $70 range is where we see oil. A little above, a little below. And gold. Well, gold went down again because Trump came up and said the dollar would come up. And yesterday, Mnuchin said the dollar was going to get weaker. So who do you believe? Because you know what they're both saying. Oh, come on now. That ain't even bullshit. That's horse shit. That's right. Horse shit one day, bullshit the next. Draghi, speaking of, Draghi pressed on go slow approach to removing stimulus. The ones that want to change course say the ECB should reduce the extent to which its message focuses on 30 billion euros worth of new bonds it is buying each month under its quantitative easing program. The ECB also says it will keep buying bonds until September, and a minority believe the ECB should even raise interest rates as soon as this year. So, this is where you're going to start seeing the pressure go. If the European economies grow stronger, the euro goes higher, the dollar goes lower, gold goes up. And coming out of Davos, European leaders warn of risks of globalism. Let us not be naive today. Globalization is going through a major crisis. And this global challenge requires a global effort said the little boy who's president of France, the Rothschild kid. Yeah, bad, globalization, good. 
nationalism, bad. Yeah, we need the multinationals to take more. Let them grow bigger. Screw everybody. Look at this little jerk. Because it's only the rich that are getting richer with globalization and the Davos. Warning, warning, bullshit alert. You know the numbers from globalization. Just in case you forgot, here they are again. All the global wealth growth in 2017, Macron, or is it Katzone? I get them mixed up because that's all you are, and a very small one at that. 82% went to the top 1% at Davos, while the bottom half of the world's population, some 3.8 billion people, Kakats, yeah, that's right. Nothing. What a bunch of disgusting human beings. You can see the facts here. Hey, but they're only facts. And speaking of facts, that Trump tax break deal, huh, boy, oh boy, it's great. They're going to bring that money back, aren't they? Nope. Tax havens retain a law for U.S. tech. Yep, right here. The U.S. tax overhaul will not prompt the country's big tech companies to drop their reliance on overseas tax avoidance strategies or create more jobs at home. Yep, this again is from the Financial Times. And then they have some quotes here. The bill is biased in favor of offshore real investment, which is completely perverse result when the intention was to bring jobs back to the U.S., said a law professor, Ed Klein Bard at the University of Southern California. I don't see any great movement of tangible assets back to the U.S., says Bob Wilson, an accounting expert in New York. Yep. The rich are getting richer. And we went through the numbers with Apple's bringing back. Pfft. Going back to the top. That's all it is. The rich are getting richer and stock buybacks, merger and acquisition activities. Here we go. Group to repatriate $3 billion this year. United Technologies is going to use the tax overhauls to repatriate at least $3 billion this year to help reduce its debt in its planned purchase of aerospace specialist Rockwell Collins. Merger and acquisition activity and stock buybacks. And all this stuff. Oh, yeah, Walmart. They gave the people $11. So now they can earn uh, about uh, $19,000 a year, full-time work after taxes. Oh, great. Toys R Us. To close 182 stores as part of restructuring. Again, you look what happened. It's all the bigs. You know what happened with Toys R Us? Well, what happened was the company's owners, private equity firm Bain Capital, and Colbert Kravis Roberts and the real estate investor Vornado bought the company in 2005 on a leveraged buyout and they have $5 billion worth of debt. And they're seeking to discharge its obligations and shutter the stores, leaving 4,500 people work at Toys R Us, out of work, possibly. It'll affect a lot of them. So, 4,500 Toys R Us workers may lose their jobs, are asked to relocate, and then you add up how much money they make. After taxes, $16,000 a year. But, here's what they're asking as they're closing stores and restructuring. That most of the senior executives get $32 million in bonuses and $8.2 million in retained bonuses that five of those executives received immediately before the bankruptcy filing. Isn't that something, huh? Uh, slave land here, folks in a country near you. 
Home sales post best year since 2006. Whew. Yep, up 1.1%. What's going to happen when interest rates go up? Because right now in the U.S., borrowing costs remain low by historical standards. 30-year fixed rate mortgage in December, 3.95%. Funds tap the brakes on bitcoins. And you know the reason why, what we've been saying. They're concerned about government intervention. We're going to have to see how this plays out. If the governments pull back a bit, you're going to see the cryptos go up. Right now, they're leveling out. People are waiting to see what the future is going to bring. Tesla employees warn to expect more Model 3 delays. They're reporting of inexperienced workers and battery issues at the Gigafactory could cause delays on the ongoing rollout of Model 3s. Hey. What's one of your top trends? Ba 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 beep bop. Electric car fantasy. A lot of talk, not a lot of cars. Batteries, the technology they're using now is basically smokestack batteries from the 1800s. They have to have a new kind of direction to make this work. But again, History before it happens. Ah, dissatisfaction with social media news grows. Nearly half of Americans favor regulating our websites such as Facebook and Google select what news stories they show to readers. According to a Gallup and Knight Foundation poll. Huh. It's not only social media dissatisfaction with the news. Look at today's major headline stories in three of the top papers in the United States. The New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, and USA Today. About these poor young girls that were sexually abused by this sick, jerk, bastard who ruined the lives of so many of them. It's disgusting. But it's not a front page story that has international or trend significance on the current events forming future trends. It's an important story to cover, but this is not, not the major issue that's affecting the world today. But that's what they're playing to, because the whole bar is going in that direction. And you can see it happening. On to some international news. Soros, Trump has U.S. set on course towards nuclear war. Doomsday clock, timekeepers say we're now the closest to global annihilation since 1953. Huh. Hey, Soros, you got a lot of dough. You afraid of nuclear war? Why don't you give some money to Occupy Peace? And we could stop the march to war. Put your money where your mouth is, Soros. How about it? Doomsday clock ticking? Thank you, subscribers to the Trends Journal, for donating to Occupy Peace. A few have been very generous. Most haven't given a dime. Put your money where your heart and your mind are. Nuclear war, annihilation, or peace. This is Gerald Salenti, and that's some of today's Trends in the News.